So welcome again to the School of Surgery podcast, this time on abdominal trauma. My name's Andrew Daytrick. I'm a core surgical trainee in Derby Hospital, and I'm joined once again by Mr. Adam Brooks, consultant trauma surgeon at Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham. So we'll just start again, first of all, by going over the objectives for today's podcast. These are to gain an awareness of the most commonly injured intra-abdominal organs as a result of blunt and also penetrating abdominal injury, to develop an approach to manage a patient with a stab abdomen ranging from the clinically well to the unstable patient, to know the indications for immediate laparotomy in a patient following penetrating abdominal injury, to know which trauma patients that arrive in a district general hospital need to be transferred to a major trauma centre and which can be managed in the district hospital, and finally how to manage a patient with bowel evisceration. So, Mr Brooks, the first thing I think we'll deal with is a patient that's had a abdominal injury, abdominal trauma injury, and you've got a trauma, you've had a trauma call and you're walking down to the emergency department. Which intra-abdominal organs sort of go through your mind? Which ones do you think are most likely to be involved, firstly, in a patient suffering blunt abdominal injury, but then also a penetrating, so a stab or a gunshot wound, so a penetrating abdominal injury? Thank you. Um, starting with blunt trauma first, the liver as it's the largest organ within the abdomen uh, is injured on um, about 40% of occasions there will be some form of liver injury uh, as well. Now that may be a minor liver injury that we need to do nothing about or a more major injury. I guess the other organ, organ that we are concerned about is the spleen, um, although it's significantly smaller, um, it is relatively fragile uh, and will be injured with blunt trauma. Bowel injury occurs slightly less co- you know, less commonly, and it tends to occur because of deceleration, and therefore you get an injury uh, either in the mesentery or at a fixed point uh, where there's a fixed point and a mobile point, so DJ flexure, ileocecal region. So that's the those are the main ones. Blunt, you think spleen and liver, and then secondarily uh, small bowel. Slightly different with penetrating, uh, and again slightly different with stab wounds and gunshot wounds. I think the thing to remember penetrating trauma doesn't respect surgical boundaries so it's no respect of the diaphragm and the territory between the thoracic surgeon and the general surgeon uh, nor the groin the abdomen being the territory of uh, general surgeons and the groin perhaps more more vascular with the blood vessels so things to be very aware of these boundary or the junctional regions are key areas to consider when you're looking at penetrating trauma a stab wound well, well that depends where it is so is it the front, the side, or the back of the abdomen? What stage of respiration? So how high was the diaphragm at the time? What position the patient was, was in? Um, all of those things need to go through your mind. Clearly, you know, it depends on the size of the, wep- uh, the weapon and the intent. So any of the organs could be injured with a penetrating wound. Equally, you know, gunshot wounds. Fortunately, we don't see too many gunshot wounds uh, compared to other areas of the world. They don't respect uh, junctional regions either. Very, very much, and um, you know, it depends on the trajectory of the of the round through the tissue as to what organs be hit. But obviously, you're going to be concerned with small bowel and colon because there's so much of it in the abdomen. Great, thank you very much. I think the next situation we'll consider is a a patient with abdominal trauma, um, and we'll use stab abdomen for example. So, which type of patient with a stab abdomen would be suitable candidates? for just observation and serial examination, which ones would require an urgent CT scan, and what type of patient would bypass a CT scan altogether and go straight for theatre, go straight for surgery? Okay, if it's okay, I'm going to take those in the reverse order because physiology drives decision-making in trauma um, and... You know, has done for you know, the last probably 10 years. So the first thing we're concerned with is what's the physiology of the patient? Are they unstable, you know, low blood pressure, tachycard- tachycardic, or are all their parameters you know, essentially normal? If someone's unstable and they've got a penetrating wound to the abdomen, such as described, so a stab wound to the abdomen, you're going to go straight to theatre. Um, you're not going to hang around and look to do a CT scan or other form of imaging. There's no role for plain films. Here, so go on the go on the physiology of the patient. The patient will demand you to do you know, the right thing. So the physiology will drive you to make the right decision, which we go to the operating room. Um, 
it's one of the few situations nowadays we're allowed to uh, operate without getting a CT scan to back us up. But uh, go on the physiology. So next really is a question between um, CT scan and observation. If it's obvious that it doesn't breach the skin um, or, uh, through the dermis, then you're not going to scan them. But I think you, we scan an awful lot of people. A few years ago, we did laparoscopy. We will retain laparoscopy for junctural region, left upper quadrant, because we know we can't see the diaphragm still very well on the CT scan. But the vast majority of our patients here with penetrating trauma uh, to the abdomen, including the back, will get a CT scan. I like to do those with uh, little markers of where the, uh, the wound is, so open out paper clips stuck over the wound, because that'll give me some idea of trajectory when I come and look at the CT scan. Um, we don't do non-urgent CT scans, it's trauma, so you know, we do the, the CT scan from recess where we see the patient, We've got a penetrating wound, we're going to scan them. We've shown in our data in a big series that we're very accurate at determining whether that's breached the peritoneum and whether there's an intra-abdominal injury. And the signs of peritoneal breach on CT scan or free fluid on CT scan or air, then we're going to proceed to a laparotomy because we we, we know that other modalities such as laparoscopy cannot confidently rule out small bowel injury. So you, to summarize that, unstable, straight to theater, stable patient, cardiovascularly normal patient, I should say, rather than stable, um, you get a CT scan, peritoneal breach on the CT scan or free fluid in the abdomen, then you're going to go for a laparotomy. The one caveat is looking at that you know, diaphragm on the left side uh, which is poorly visualized on CT scan, and they're the group that you might consider putting a laparoscope in and having a look to see whether the, uh, the diaphragm's been breached. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com, and finally, by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much, and see you next time.